Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. Now, before we start today's journey, we are going to be having breakfast. We are heading to Jilly's restaurant. We are heading down Great George Street. We are going to make the right turn, right at the library. That street is called Barclay Street. So we are going to drive onto Barclay Street and then when we reach at the intersection of Barclay Street and Darling Street, we make the right turn. When we make that right turn, we don't bother to take off the indicator. Or if we take it off, we put it on right away. Because the next turning is where you find Jilly's restaurant. Yeah, man, we are here now. <laughs> so if you look at the screen, you can see our breakfast. Yeah, man, that photograph on your left. That is I, eating breakfast at Jilly's restaurant. Look at the plate. <laughs> look at the, look here. Let me tell you something. I know what you know. Whenever we talk about pork and these things, some people are going to burn a fire. Yeah, man, it's your choice to burn a fire, you know. But guess what? Do you think the fire is going to stop nobody from eating pork? People have choices. People have choices. You understand what I say? If you don't eat it, that's your choice. If I want to eat it, my choice. My choice does not affect you. Yeah, man, we can agree to disagree. Not true. <laughs> so, the breakfast I'm eating is corned pork and aki. There's some vegetable in it, roast breadfruit, yam, dumpling, yeah, boiled dumpling and fried dumpling, boiled banana, and boiled potato. Right at Jilly's restaurant. If you're unable to drive to Jilly's restaurant, you can give them a phone call. You can call them at, and if you look on the screen, that's Michelle on the left and Jilly on the right. That's the boss man and the boss lady at Jilly's restaurant. There's the number on your screen. They do delivery as well. So you can call them at 876-866-9637. Yeah, man, give them a call and I am sure you won't be disappointed. Or, if you have the time, you can drive there. They don't only serve corn pork, you know. They serve other things as well. But that is our favorite. Yes, bun me out all the want. It's my choice. I am eating and putting in my body what I want. I am not here imposing on you. I'm just telling the pork lovers that if you want some corn pork and aki, that's the place to be. If you want your corn pork soup, that is also the place to be. Trust me when I tell you, good food. <laughs> Julia and Michelle, big up on yourself. Yeah, man, enough respect. So in today's journey, we are going to be starting at Flamstead in the parish of Anova. We are heading towards Lucy, then to Montego Bay. We are going to be passing areas like Kingsville, Dias, Middlesex, and we are heading to Lucy. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the countryside with me. Now, in today's video, we have a whole heap of stories for you. <laughs> the mayhem, may I tell you, the may there was an incident last night where a total of three people died. Three people. You're going to want to stick around for it. But, first up, if you look on your screen, do you remember that robbery? Yeah man, it made the rounds in 2020. That was a robbery in May 2020. It took place at Westgate Hill in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. A Chinese businessman, he operates business in Montego Bay. He and his family, they were heading out when that white Nissan AD wagon motor car with three men aboard intercepted them. You can see on your screen what took place. Two of the hoodlums came out of the car, went into the vehicle that the Chinese businessman was driving, and they stole a total of 8 million Jamaican dollars. That same Chinese businessman, he was robbed in 2019. He was robbed of 12 million Jamaican dollars. So it was four of them who were involved, or allegedly involved. Now, 
two of the hoodlums in the robbery, they were shot and killed by the police shortly after at Green Pond in Montego Bay. It is said that when they were shot and killed, a large sum of money was recovered in the car. Yeah, man, they were shot and killed in the same Nissan AD wagon motor car. The police, they carried out investigation and DNA plus other evidence led them to arrest two persons. Two persons were arrested and charged in connection with this robbery. Now, one of the hoodlums, he was arrested and charged in February 2020. His name is Lucan Okana. Lucan Okana, he has ties in both Flanka and Narwood in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. Lucan Okana, he was arrested and charged with another person. So both of them were facing the court. Now, Lucan, because of the overwhelming evidence, that is DNA plus other things, he went to court where he pleaded guilty. In fact, when he was held in February last year, he was held with an illegal firearm. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison for that illegal firearm. He went to court on the robbery, aggravation and illegal possession of firearm matter concerning this robbery and he pleaded guilty. So he was sentenced to 20 years in prison on this robbery charge. The judge stated that he will not be eligible for parole until he serves 15 years. So, Luke Anokana, he has been sentenced. 20 years in prison, 15 years before he is eligible for parole. His accomplice, the other man in custody, will be going to the courts shortly. And if and when that case is adjudicated on, we will certainly be updating this story. Stand by for that. Now, in this next story, and you have to listen to this one. <laughs> you have to listen to this one. Trust me when I tell you. Now, do you know where the White House Beach Club is? Yeah, man, the White House Beach Club. Like you're heading to White House in Westmoreland. You pass Sandal South Coast. When you go up further, those houses on the left, that area is called White House Beach Club. Yeah, man, some luxury home being built there. So, this incident took place over there at White House Beach Club. It took place late last night. Wednesday, March 2, 2022, about 11 p.m. Here is what we are learning. So like we told you, some houses are being built over there. So a young man, he's an electrician. He was working on one of these houses. He was doing some late night work. Remember, you know, yesterday is Ash Wednesday. A lot of people were home with them family. This young man, he was out working. Whilst he was working, a little piece of nastiness found. This little piece of nastiness, he had a gun in his hand. Him took down the electrician and said to him, Pee hole, don't move. That P, I didn't call out the word, but it's not the abbreviation for police. Most of these guys, you know, whenever they are juking you down, or, or as them call it, when they might juke you down, that's the term they use, pee hole. So he had a gun in his hand. Him feel big and bad. Pee hole. Don't move. The gun that he had in his hand is that gun on your screen. That gun is a black and silver Mossberg 12 gauge shotgun. So it's not a shotgun. So the electrician was very alert. And it's a long gun like we said. And he realized that this little piece of nastiness, this little piece of gun idiot, don't know nothing about no gun. Because if he did, he wouldn't be so close to this electrician. Because the next move that this electrician made probably saved his life. He boxed away the gun and held on to it. Can you picture that? Yeah man, he boxed it away, held on to it. As a result, a struggle ensued between him and the little piece of nastiness. One round was discharged from the gun whilst they were struggling. The little piece of nastiness, yeah man, the same little gun idiot, him run like 10 UCN bull. Ran away, leaving that shotgun that you are seeing on your screen. Now if you look on the side, there are four rounds on it. 
the serial number for this gun, it was intact. Look on the gun. It's a bra if it's not brand new, it is well kept. We want to big up this electrician, you know. Trust me, we want to big him up because, trust me, the move that he made probably saved his life. Because we don't know what the intention of this little hoodlum was. We don't know, you know. We can speculate and say maybe I rob him come for rob, but we don't know. But, electrician, big up yourself and ensure, yeah man, ensure that you take your safety precaution. Because right now, some people are cursed. They are vexed that you take with the gun. You know, not true. I hope the police tell you that these hoodlums and these cronies, they are upset that you took away the gun. So, be careful, be vigilant, and stay alert. But, big up yourself. Yeah, man. Well done. It's just a pity, you know. Electrician, it is just a pity. Just a pity. But, be that as it may, enough respect. Now, have you hit on the like button as yet? <laughs> have you hit on the like button as yet? You have not yet done so? Uh, what, the story is them interesting, not true? Yeah, man, take a pause. <laughs> take a pause and hit on the like button. All right? Now, there is a serial animal owner killer in Green Jail. Yeah, man. There is a serial killer in Green Jail who is killing owners of animals and taking away their animals. Remember that last year, in the middle of last year, two animal farmers were killed. And near to Grangeville, over in Anova, another farmer, animal farmer as well, was also killed. Well, this latest incident took place early yesterday morning, Ash Wednesday, March 2, 2022. It took place at Mint Road, in the Grangeville area, in the parish of Westmoreland. We are learning that a man, his name is Mr. Aaron Scarlett. He's popularly known as Dada. Dada, he was 68 years old and he was a farmer. He lived at Crowder District in Grange in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, it is said that Dada, he raised goats among other farming. So early yesterday morning, sometime after 6.30, Dada, he left out with four goats, three she-goats and one ram. He left his home at Crowder to Mint Road to feed the goats. About 10.30 in the morning, we are told that a passerby stumbled upon the body of Mr. Scarlett. Mr. Scarlett, he was lying face down in a pool of his own blood. This was along a cane interval at Mint Road in Crenshaw. As a result, the police were called. When the police went on the scene and made checks, they saw Mr. Scarlett lying face down. He had a chop wound to his neck. So whoever it was that took out Mr. Scarlett, they used a sharp machete and gave Mr. Scarlett one blow to the neck and it proved to be fatal. Oh, if you're working with me, you know, this is YouTube. We have to be careful how we have structured our words, you know. Some people are after us. So, Mr. Scarlett, he got one blow to his neck and this blow was inflicted by a machete. From all appearance, Mr. Scarlett, he died on the spot. The four goats that Mr. Scarlett carried to feed, they were not seen. So whoever it was that took him out, they left with the goats. Mr. Scarlett, Dada, 68 years old, been raising his goats. And somebody killed him for his goats. Eh? You see how we as a people, how we... Why may I tell you, you know, man? Anyhow, if you are here and you are watching this video so far, if you have not yet hit on the like button, remember to hit on it. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, remember, hit on the subscribe button, as also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all, so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be notified. And also, keep on sharing the channel. Keep on telling a friend to tell a friend. We are heading to 80,000 subscribers. 
and with your help, we'll soon reach there. So, continue to grow with us. In the final story for today, and this one, this one, may I tell you, you know, there was a bike show at Bessie Baker. Now, Bessie Baker is in the hills of Hanover. Bessie Baker is in the Ramble Police area of Hanover. So there was a bike show being held there yesterday evening into last night. We are told that during this bike show, about some time after 11 p.m., a man, he was shot by hoodlums. That man, his name is Alge Ricketts. He was 26 years old and he lived at Golden Grove District in the Mount Peter area of Hanover. So, Alge, he received a gunshot wound. He got one under his armpit, his left armpit, and we are told that he also received one to his abdomen. The hoodlums who shot him made good their escape. Alge, he fell to the ground, and some of his friends, they were there with him. So when the shooting died down, and they realized that Alge was shot, they picked him up and put him in a white Toyota Axio motor car. Four of Alge's friends, went into the car. This car, it was being driven by a lady. Her name is Vanessa Spence. She was 29 years old and she's a telephone operator. She also lives at Golden Grove. Another female went into the car with them. Her first name is Tashona. She's 21 years old. A male also went into the car. His name is Zidane. He's 22 years old. Now, all of them are from the same area, Golden Grove. So they drove out on their way to the Savlamar Hospital to try and get treatment for Alge. <laughs> them said trouble not set like rain, not true? So, you would have realized that the female who was driving the car, she must have been speeding, not true? Because she was trying to get her friend. Well, I'm not sure if it's her friend, or her relative or what but she was trying to get him to the hospital in a quick time because just imagine you know Alge is on the back seat of the car Zidane is sitting beside him and Tashana or Tashona is sitting beside him our information is that Alge was sitting in the middle of the car at the back Vanessa was driving and Brianna she was in the front passenger seat so just think about it. Alje run back and she was to a moan and a groan and a pain. She was to a tell her if he hurry up because he feel like he got dead. Not true. Just think about it. Vanessa, she must be panicking because she never experienced them a kind of thing yeah, before. Just think about it. I'm just trying to let you picture what was taking place in that motor car. So, she must have been speeding. Remember that the road is fixed. That road, smooth road to drive on. So she was heading down the hill. She was now driving along the Hadomain Road. On reaching a section of the roadway, we are told that Vanessa, she overtook a Toyota Noah. A water truck. That water truck that you are seeing on your screen. It was coming in the opposite direction. Think about it. Vanessa did not have any time to cut back in to her side of the road. She just overtook the Noah. Or was about to overtook the Noah. Because we are not sure whether or not she completed overtaking it. Because if she did, we are expecting that the Noah would be in the accident too, not sure. So, we don't think she overtook the Noah. But... From all indication, she was in the process of overtaking this Noah when she collided head-on into that water truck that you're seeing on your screen. You see the water truck? Now, look at the Toyota Axio motor car. It was smashed up. We are learning that all five persons were trapped inside of the car. It was when members from the Savlamar Fire Department arrived on the scene, they were able to cut the motor car and take them out of it. By this time, Brianna, who was in the front 
passenger seat and Vanessa, they were DEAD. Tashona and Zidane, who were on the back seat, as also Alje, they were all rushed to the Savlamar Hospital in very serious condition. Because we are told that Tashona, she received a serious wound to her head. Alje, he was rushed into surgery right away. But he died whilst being treated. So, a post-mortem examination would have to be done on him to see if he died as a result of the gunshot wounds they received or he died as a result of being injured in the accident. It's relevant, you know, because if he died as a result of the gunshot wounds, it is a case of murder. So it would have to be registered on the murder statistic. If he died, maybe he hit up his head or something in the car and he died as a result of being injured in his head, then the case would be a case of wounding with intent. Right? Yeah, man, that's what the thing said. So, at the end of the day, this was tragic indeed. And remember, you know, Tashona and Zidane, they are not yet out of the hoods. When we were doing this video, we tried to make some contact, but we didn't. But we are hoping that they are still here with us. If anything changes, tomorrow we'll be updating the story. But, sad indeed, the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Quick Silver Sin. Criminals, they're